Hello and welcome to yet another pod fic for me to share. This one is mature, so just be warned. It is another Peter Parker slash Tony Stark. It does have minor Quinton Beck slash Tony Stark, but that's more. It, it, we, we aren't really shown any. It's called A Softer Touch by Afi. Lafferty son? I had I had to Google how to pronounce that. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, blame Google. And me. <laughs> I should have researched this better. Sorry. <laughs> Summary. Quinton is an abusive asshole, and Peter steps in to take care of Tony when he needs it. The really shitty thing was, that wasn't the first time it happened. It wasn't the first time Quinton had left him alone after a scene. Left him alone to recover and clean up, him, clean himself up. Or sometimes, left him alone to fall. That's what was happening tonight. Quinton's excuse had been flimsy, and even still half in subspace, Tony could see through the lie. There was no family emergency in the middle of that scene. Quinton often forgot that Tony was his boss and had seen his personal file. Tony knew he didn't have a sister in Queens, but Tony didn't call him out on the lie. He never did. Quinton and Tony had been lovers for a couple of months. They went. They never went on dates or spent casual time together. It really was more a friends with benefit kind of relationship, just without the friends part. Somehow, an inappropriate workplace conversation had revealed more about Tony's sexual preferences than he usually le- let anyone hear, and Quinton had been quick to take advantage of the information. Learning that Tony Stark liked to be dominated in bed felt like the best thing Quinton had ever heard. It hadn't taken much to talk Tony into sleeping with him. It was intoxicating to see the great Tony Stark, not used to begging, crying mess at his hands. The tricky thing was, Quinton didn't actually like Tony very much. He despised him, in fact. The only reason he still had been working at Stark Industry had been the hope of finding some way to get back at Tony for every perceived insult he'd ever received from the man. Quinton took the opportunity to fuck Tony as often as he could and looked for any flimsy excuse to punish the man. His favourite thing was to see how long he could make Tony beg just to deny him any release at the end. And Tony took it all like a man starved at a banquet. He never complained about how Quinton treated him, had never u- had never yet used their safe word, and never questioned the excuses Quinton gave as he left. And he always left as soon as he could, rarely doing anything to make sure Tony was alright afterwards. He just didn't care. That was how Tony f- found himself, on the floor, cold and alone, and fighting back tears. He was leaning back against the end of his bed. Sorry, <laughs> a bit out of breath. He was leaning back against the end of his bed, staring blankly at the mess on the floor nearby. Everything was starting well that evening. Quinton had been running late, but then. Usually, sh- they actually shared a drink in the conversation before heading to the bar- bedroom. Once there, he turned Tony into a hole to be used, and Tony was actually a little embarrassed by how arousing the- he found the experience. He nearly came on the spot when Quinton shoved his dick down his throat and told him he needed to come f- more. He needed to come more than Tony needed to breathe. In the end, Quinton pulled out and shot the load over Tony's face and shoved his hand down to grip his, cruelly grip his hair and told him that it wasn't worth the effort to jack him off and the only way he was coming that night was humping the floor. Tony did as he was told and it was over fast. He was slumped over, his dick still twitching against the carpet as Quinton made his excuse and left with a cold smirk. Tony had never, that Tony never saw as he looked back at what he was leaving behind. Tony finally sat up and managed to pull the covers off of his bed 
and wrap around himself. But he couldn't quite make himself get up. He felt cold, worn and empty. No wonder Quentin had just left him. He was pathetic, come drying on his face, trying not to let his blanket drag through the mess he'd left on the floor. Even as he used a corner of it to try and clean his face, a wave of shame washed over, washed through him as the events of the night replayed themselves in his mind. He was disgusted with himself and he didn't blame Quinton for, for wanting to do, for never wanting to do more than just fuck and run. Good evening, Peter. The lab is open for you, as usual. Friday greeted him as, as she usually did when Peter entered the tower. He grinned openly, delighted as always to hear the Irish lint in her voice. Thanks, Fry. Is Tony there yet? There was a slight hesitation before she answered, almost short enough that you might have imagined it. Not yet, she said. Her words were clipped, and there was no further explanation about Tony's whereabouts. Usually the air could chatter at length, especially when complaining to Tony about how, especially when complaining to Peter about Tony not taking care of himself. Her current silence was odd, but Peter could make a couple of guesses about what was going on. Peter, uh, Tony might have put a privacy photo. photo <sighs> sorry, Tony might have, well, have put a privacy protocol in place, stopping her from volunteering information. Or he could be on a date. Peter knew he was seeing someone, though he didn't know who. Pardon me. Sorry. Friday knew how Peter felt about his mentor. Feelings that had only grown stronger as he grew out of his childish crush. If Tony were on a date, Friday might as well be trying to spare his feelings. Peter sighed and made his way to the lab. Eventually, Tony would show up with his own explanation or excuse and Peter would brush it aside and they would settle in to work together as they usually did. In the meantime, Peter would get started on his own. He and Tony were currently working on a future... <laughs> he and Tony were currently working on further miniaturising the... the uh, f miniaturising for the housing for the iron spider suit. Its current casing was a little larger than Tony's nanite casing, having been designed before Tony applied the nanites to his own armour. Peter was certain that they could configure the nanites to fit into something the size of a wristwatch, like Tony's one, like, like the one Tony wore with his replicators built into it. <laughs> replicators. Like the one Tony wore with his repulsors built into into it. His suit was really sorry. Don't know what's going on with me this time. A bit stumbly. His suit <laughs> sorry. His suit did have isn't it nearly as much as the Iron Man armor, so he should be able to fit it into a much smaller storage space. Lost in his work, Peter barely noticed the time passing Several hours went by as he worked alone. He was startled out of his focus by Friday calling his name. Peter, there is a difficulty. The AI's voice was almost he hesitating, something he couldn't remember ever hearing before. What is it, Friday? He glanced at the time, realising that Tony was now hours late. Has something happened to Tony? I have a conflicting protocol preventing me from sharing that information. Her voice was now prim and full of disapproval. Peter smiled grimly, understanding her frustration. Tony had probably forbidden her from telling anything what he was doing and gone and gotten into trouble. Peter considered how to proceed, wondering if he could use his tingle, he grimaced, as his mind pulled that ridiculous word to figure out where Tony was. Since the blip, Peter had been trying to train his at that ability. It was too random and unreliable to be helpful, so he was trying to learn how to control it. It was still too unpredictable, however, to count on right now. He did have an emergency override that would let him bypass Friday's protocols. It was supposed to be used in emergencies only, but something felt wrong enough that Friday had stretched the limits of her protocol 
to the extent she already had, maybe then this was an emergency. Friday. Emergency override Papa Bravo. <laughs> Sangria. Ooh, that's not that word. Don't know what that word is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just pass right over that one. One for acknowledge. Override acknowledge. Boss is in his bedroom and he is in distress. Peter didn't waste his time asking more questions. Whenever his curi curiosity would surface once he reached Tony and he made sure he was alright. His mind was racing f faster than his feet as he tried to imagine what could have inc inc <laughs> incapacitated Tony in his own bedroom without setting off any other alarms. The sight that confronted him when he stepped into the room was something he was not prepared for. Tony Stark had always been larger than life in Peter's eyes. He had filled every space in his, despite small and average stature. In all the years Peter had known him, he had never seen him look so small and vulnerable and broken. Not even when the aftermath of the final battle against Thanos, when his half of his body had been burned and broken. Tony? Tony, are you alright? He always thought that it was a ridiculous question to ask, but all his training ever said that you should always start with it. Things might not be as bad as they seem. It's an easy question for people to answer. Tony didn't answer him, however. He just stared blankly into the space in front of him. Peter darted to his side and knelt beside him, appalled by the condition Tony was in. He was hud huggled, huddled in the corner between the bed and the wall. A blanket, half of the bed, co covered over his lap. His skin was freezing to the touch, and that scared Peter more than anything. Tony usually burned hot and bright, and seeing him like this was a shock. He recovered quickly and took Tony's face between his hands, running his head so they could, running his head so they were face to face. Turning, ooh, sorry, turning his head so they were face to face. Tony, it's Peter, can you hear me? When the older man just stared at him without answering, Peter frowned and looked out into the room. Friday, how long has he been like this? Did he have a nightmare? Boss had a date, and it has been about 40, and it has been 43 minutes since Mr. Beck left Boss alone. Peter picked up the hesitation over the word date and f figured it was simply a hookup that went wrong. He caught the name as well and stored that away for later. He suspected it was more information than Friday was supposed to give, but she was using his or overrides as an excuse to volunteer it. He felt anger stir deep inside him as he considered that someone had done this to Tony and then left him alone like this. Peter was not as innocent as most people assumed. He recognised Subdrop when he saw it. How, whoever this Beck was, he should have never left Tony without making sure he was alright. And Peter's fur fury grew more when he thought about it. He planned to have a conversation with Beck in the near future. Now that he had the idea of what happened tonight, he started picking out more details, like the cut on the corner of Tony's lip, cum dried in his hair, and he was pretty sure on the rug nearby. There was nothing necessarily wrong with any of that, but combined with Tony's near catatonic and frozen state, Peter was ready to track down Beck and destroy him. No one treated Tony like this and got away with it. But that was a problem for later. Right now, Tony needed help, and that trumped everything else. Friday, start the shower as hot as is safe. Actually, no, make that a bath, please. He realised that Tony might not be able to stand on his own, and decided that somewhere well, decided that he would get warm faster if he was submerged in hot water. Tony, it's Peter. Can you answer me? He tried again to get some response from Tony, and his eyes flickered to meet Peter's, but he didn't speak, just looked away after a moment. Okay, it's going to be okay. In just a minute we're going to get into the 
bathroom, and we're going to get you cleaned up. You don't have to do anything. I've got you, all right? Just stay here while I do while I get everything ready. Peter stood then and stripped down to his boxers. He knew skin contact would help. Tony recovered faster, but he wasn't comfortable getting completely naked. He was sure he could borrow a pair of dry underwear later. He could hear the water running in, running behind one door, so he opened the other one into Tony's closet, poked around until he found soft sweats, socks and underwear. He carried everything into the bathroom. He moved a pile of towels close to the tub and tested the water. There was a bottle of lavender and mint oil near the edge. He tipped a little into the bath. It smelled nice, and he smiled to himself as he hurried back to Tony. He took a moment to run through the housekeeping staff that he knew, personally knew. Tony had the best, most reliable people, and he paid them what they were worth. And they, but even so, some were more reliable than others. Friday, call up... um. Jewels from housekeeping. I want every trace of Beck removed from this room. Tell them twice the bonus for discretion if they're done before we finish our bath. He didn't wait for her to reply before he knelt beside Tony again and gently scooped him into his arms. It broke his heart to see the way Tony wrapped his arms around his neck and hid his face against Peter's shoulder. The older man clung to Peter like a lifeline. He didn't say anything yet, but Peter felt his whole body trembling against him and held him that much tighter as he carried him effortlessly into the bathroom, murmuring quiet reassurances as, th as they went along. The bathroom was warm with steam and smelled delightfully of lavender and mint, and Peter stepped directly into the tub with Tony still in his arms. He lowered himself carefully into the water, grateful for the strength and balance that came with being Spider-Man. The water rose to their chests as he settled, Tony between his legs. Eventually he reached for a sponge and began to squeeze water over Tony's neck and shoulders, warming the parts of him that were above the water. He kept one arm wrapped around Tony's middle, keeping him steady and secure while he worked. When Tony shiver shivering had stopped and his skin was no longer cold to the touch, Peter added soap to the sponge and began cleaning him. Keeping up a steady description of everything he was doing so that Tony wouldn't be surprised and pausing every now and then to see if Tony was ready to start talking in return. He didn't say anything for a while, letting Peter move and position him as he needed to. It wasn't until it was time to wash his hair that he finally found his no voice. No, Pete, wait! His voice trembled when he spoke. It certainly had none of the strength and certainty that he normally associated with down the sponge and leaned back, giving Tony some space if he wanted it. He did so and followed Peter's every movement. It's, it's just, I don't like water poured over my face. I'm sorry. Peter instinctively turned his head to press a kiss against Tony's temple before he replied. Thank you for telling me, Tony. That's very good. You don't have to apo you don't have anything to apologize for. It never occurred to Peter that both the kiss and the praise were highly inappropriate, and he wasn't in a position to, he wasn't in a position where he should be doing either of those things. He was in his own headspace now where the only thing that mattered to him was the man in his arms who needed him, and he would do whatever it took to make sure Tony was safe and happy. No, Pete, I'm sorry you saw me like this. It's not your problem shouldn't have to do this. I'm so fucking weak and I'm sorry. Tony seemed to shrink in, in, in on himself as he spoke, and Peter hadn't thought it was possible for his heart to break more. But it was. He wrapped his arms around 
Tony once again and held him close and bent his head and pressed it against his shoulder. Listen to me, Tony. I am not sorry. There is no place in the universe where I would rather be right now. I will always take care of you, and no one is ever going to hurt you like this again. You don't understand, Kit. I wanted him to. But Peter was already shaking his head and gently laid a finger over Tony's lips as he spoke, his voice calm and filled with indistri- <laughs> indistributable authority. Tony, if I'm making you uncomfortable and you want me to stop, then I will. But that's the only thing I want to hear from you right now unless you have a question or need to ask for something. Anything else we need to talk about can wait until tomorrow. Do you understand? He expected to Tony to do as he was told and he waited patiently, watching Tony for any signs of distress. Tony's eyes grew wider as Peter spoke and jo- jaw dropped open. It took a moment for him to collect himself, but he snapped his mouth closed and nodded. Yeah, I understand. Uh, You're not making me uncomfortable. Please, we can... Will you? He stumbled over his words, beginning to look worried. He seemed unsure of what what or how to ask for something. It's okay. Just say it. I want you to ask for anything you want. I'll let you know if the answer is no. But I still want you to ask. Tony nodded and seemed to relax more into Peter's arms as they talk. Will you wash my hair? Please. He asked, his eyes cast downwards and his voice barely above a whisper. Peter swore to himself that there would be a time where Tony would not hesitate to ask for what he needed. Of course I will. Tip your head back so I can keep the water out of your face. Tony complied and took, and Peter took the greatest care wetting Tony's hair. He, went, he spent some time massaging Tony's scalp as he worked the shampoo through until it squeaked. Then he used his palm to scoop water to rinse the bubbles clear. The whole process took a long time, but Peter was patient and deliberate in his movements. He, not a single drop of water ran across Tony's face as he worked, and when he was finished, he used a hand towel to blot the excess water from Tony's hair so it wouldn't drip when he picked up his head. Carefully, ooh, finally, Tony was clean and relaxed. Laying back against Peter with his eyes closed, his hand rested on top of Peter's where they crossed in front of his body. Peter thought he was on the verge of falling asleep and could feel the water starting to cool. So he turned to kiss him again, just a soft brush of his lips against his cheek, and sat up in the bath, taking Tony with him. Tony, do you think you can stand? It's time to get out and get dry. He could feel Tony testing, tensing like he was testing his strength in his legs, and after a moment shook his head and glanced at Peter with a look of apprehension. Peter just smiled and brushed a lock of hair. Peter just smiled and brushed a lock of hair back out of his face. Good, Tony. Thank you for being honest with me. I'll never be upset with you for being honest. Tension eased out of Tony's expression as Peter stepped out and laid a towel over the bench against the wall. Then he lifted Tony out from the tub, supporting most of his body weight easily and easing him down onto the bench, wrapping the second towel around his shoulders like everything else the man owned. Tony's towels were large and sinfully fluffy. The man looked lost in the soft folds, and Peter couldn't help but smile fondly at the sight. He quickly stripped Tony, He quickly stripped his own wet boxes and towel dry and pulled on a pair of Tony's underwear then turned back to Tony to help him stand so Peter could dry him off as well. Tony leaned against Peter for balance and support, shakily lifted one foot then the other so so Peter could ease him into boxes and sweatpants. At the last moment, Peter decided he was warm enough to sleep without a shirt, letting him keep more skin-to-skin contact, which he thought Tony still needed. Once they were both dry, Peter lifted Tony into his arms again. 
Tony startled and tried to squirm free, but Peter held him securely as he walked back into, into the bedroom. Relax, Tony. We're only going as far as the bed. Let me do this for you. He was pleased to see that the room was spotless. The bed was freshly made and turned down. There was n wasn't so much as a damp spot on the carpet anymore. Additionally, there was a tray beside the bed with bottles of water and a bowl filled with blueberries, walnuts and bite-sized bits of cheese. There was no sign of jewels and Peter made a mental note to thank them personally for being so quick and thorough. Peter hadn't asked for the food, but very much, but it was very much appreciated. Peter eased Tony into the bed and left him, sitting there for a moment, as he raided the closet for a pair of sweatpants, then put them on, tying them low around his hips. He gained a couple inches over the last years, and he and... Tony were now the same height, but he was still boyishly slender, and Tony's clothes always and Tony's clothes would always be a little big on him. He returned to the bed and sat next to Tony with the bowl in hands with the bowl in his hands. All right, I need you to eat and drink a little, then we can go to sleep. Is this good, or do you want me to order something else for you? I'm fine, Pete. I'm not really hungry. Tony shook his head in denial of the bowl and looked like he really wanted to just lay down and sleep for the next week. Tony, Peter said firmly, I didn't ask if you were hungry. You've had a hard night and you need to eat at least half of this bowl and one of the bottles of water. He could feel that this was the deciding moment between them. Tony had to decide whether he wanted to keep taking Peter's orders or if enough was enough and he was going to laugh this off as the kid trying to be in charge. Peter kept his face calm, refusing to give evidence of the turmoil within him. He loved Tony for as long as he wanted, he loved Tony for so long and he wanted this chance so badly. He understood that Tony needed more and he was sure that Tony or anyone else would give him credit for <laughs> He understood what Tony needed more. He was sure than to, more than he was sure Tony would, or anyone else would give him credit for. He was never in a million years have wished for this to happen, but now it has. He was just grateful he was there and had known what to do. All he wanted now was to keep showering this complex man with all the love and care he deserved. Finally, something seemed to give. And to Peter's relief, Tony reached for the bowl and began to eat. All right, all right, I'm sorry. He mumbled as he plucked a couple of blueberries from the bowl and plopped them in his mouth. But his lips quirked up in a hint of a smile as he started to sound like his usual self again. Tony dutifully continued to eat one small bite after another until the bowl was halfway empty set it back on the tray and picked up a bottle of water without being prompted to. He twisted it open and drank it down swiftly, clearly surprised how thirsty he was. He actually was. He returned the empty bottle to the tray as well and looked expectantly at the younger man. Peter leaned in and kissed him on the forehead, easing him back to lay down. He nimbly climbed over him, got under the covers himself, taking the big spoon position as he wrapped his arms around Tony's middle and tucked his face against the nape of his neck. He knew he was taking a bit of liberty now, but he prayed that Tony wouldn't object. But the older man just went boneless in his arms, breathing out a small sigh as he settled back into Peter's chest. Tony was warm now, and Peter pressed close and pulled the heavy cover over their shoulders in the heat to hold in the heat, and felt himself starting to drift off to sleep right along with Tony. Good night, Tony. I've got you. You're safe now. Always. Yes, so that's the end of that one. Sorry if that was a little long. It's usually it's longer than I usually read, but I hope you enjoyed it. Again, this was by Ify. 
Lafitus on? Again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. That's how Google said it was, but thank you very much for listening and a good night.